and we're like, hey, everybody, check out this new song. And then none of the lyrics worked the entire, the entire time. <laughs> check out this brand new song that you've never seen before. And so Joanna was joking. She's like, well, you made it through. You started speaking in tongues, but... <laughs> you know what? I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't. You don't need, you know, you're I focused did, on the I message. I talked about it. focusing on the positive yesterday. Oh, Focus on the positive. So, no, Kirkwood, I did not see or notice anything <laughs> that was askew yesterday <laughs> in the music. <laughs> that was, and that's that, a, You know what? That would throw me off. But you. I don't know what it is about music, guys, but y'all all know the lyrics to everything. <laughs> I wish that that were true. I wish that that were true. But I tell the, I, I tell the praise team it's an, uh, it's an advantage when, because I tell them, like, that by the time that the congregation is singing this song one time, you've sung it, like, 12 this week. That's right. So it's yeah. the same as you know in the text. You know, I feel like you know every verse that we ever talk about. It's because you study it for, you know, an average of 15 to 20 more hours per week than anybody else does. Well, I do spend a lot of time in it, that's for sure. I'm grateful that, that you do. That is for sure. That is for sure. And um, the funny thing about those lyrics, though, when they broke, this, when the software goes down on the back screen, it just shows like the screensaver, which is this, it's, it's this picture of this sand dune in like the Gobi Desert or something like that. And I'm like, well, if that's not a symbol, here I am walking around in the <laughs> desert, just desperate, desperate So the for words a word went out on y'all yesterday? Oh, big time. Well, I didn't big see time. them go out on our screen. No, they didn't. No, no, Brody, Brody covered Y'all could have all wait. Y'all could have turned around and just looked up at the screen, turned your back. If my song is heard without yeah. them, <laughs> well, the irony is that her the song she was leading was called "By Faith." Yeah. I'm like, you just need to believe, believe for it, Joanna. Believe for those lyrics to come. It's like a through composed song. By faith, the prophet saw a day when the long for Messiah would appear. Yeah, and I threw you off, Brady. Uh, Bro Brady, Brody. That, that, that would definitely the Brady throw him bunch. Off. The Brody bunch. Um, I. I threw you up because I saw in the, well, I guess it maybe it was you because I oh, saw no. that I was preaching out of the dysfunctional family, and that's this Sunday. Yeah, that's my fault. I put, I, <clears throat> I put that in. I put that in early. I think yeah. I misunderstood what you said. But you uh, had to preach on the family this week so you could set up what the dysfunctional yeah, yeah. family looks yeah, like. Yeah, well, I got to thinking, well, where does this all begin? And, of course, it begins with a mom and a dad. And so that's, you know, I thought, well, that's the better place to go is all the way back there to, yeah, to Genesis two to the very beginning. To but the a, very beginning. But a sheath, the uh, very beginning. To the very beginning. So you had a lot of really fun points in there. I, you know, I, I, I bulleted them so that we could talk through okay. some of these. Um, as I've mentioned before, and longtime listeners will remember that I'm an excellent Hebrew scholar. I so I loved it when you when you used uh, when you used bod, bod. talking about. Isn't that, isn't that funny? <clears throat> That's the word for lonely or alone yeah, in Hebrew. Or ba it's bad. Yeah, it's just it's, it's not good that man should be yeah, bad. Yeah. It's not good that man should be bad. Yeah, should be alone. So that was good. Which that's you know, any any other fun Hebrew notes on that? I guess I didn't mm -hmm. think too. I didn't think very you know deeply. tov of course is good. Book tov is yes. you know good morning. Mor uh, you know so yeah. So, that, so tov is good and bad is bad. Well, you use that lonely. as a. You use yeah. that as a contrast because in the creation narrative, God says, this is good. This is tov, yeah. tov, tov, tov. And then it's only, yeah. only when man is alone says, no, this is yeah. not. The, this is the not bad good. part about it is man is alone. And the, and the whole thing to me is that God intended this to, you know, it was not like, oh, gosh, you know, uh, you know my bad. I did something wrong here. Right. I forgot something. It was a, the whole purpose of it was intentional. So that Adam would come to this realization, you know, I'm I'm incomplete. There's something that I need. Yeah, yeah, like a a, a different a, a like. I mean, it's it's mysterious to me the different ways that man and woman reflect the image of God, right? Because mm -hmm. we're both equal image bearers, and we are yeah, so yeah. different from one another. We are, and those differences are what the courts call today irreconcilable differences. Right. But the differences were created by God to put us together, to draw us together, 
the where I have a lack, Debbie has a she she excels. Right. And when she has a lack or where she is defic I excel. Right. And those those deficiencies in each of our lives and where we excel are used not to drive us apart, but to pull us together. Well, and it we po- need each other. And it points to Christ in the church. Yes. And it points to the eternal yeah. communion of God with himself yeah. in the yeah. Trinity, which is a mystery. Like, that's not something we're going to fully understand. No, no. There are parts of Scripture that you will never grasp and fully understand until we are face-to-face. Well, and that's true, and, and even like you, you briefly touched on this in one of the services, even the creation narrative leading up to that is still mysterious to so many people. There's the endless debate of how did God do it, how long did yeah. it take, that sort of thing. You know, by fiat, ex nihilo, out, out of, nothing. of nothing, you know, out of nothing he speaks and it comes into being. I read you know, a, I look at flowers this time of year. It's beautiful. And I get up to a flower, and I look. I just look at the flower, the color, the texture, and I think to myself every time, what in the world was it's going amazing. through the mind of God when he created? And then he could have just created one. Right, but there's thousands of different varieties. But there's ju- just, and I love daylilies, and we've got them planted, and we've got some out there that look like sherbet ice cream. You could just <laughs> eat it, you know? Lime and lemon and peach and you look at that and you just think all the marvel of creation that God gave us eyes that could detect color. It's amazing. Well, and the thing is, I, and the closer that I look at one of the flowers, actually, I was looking in the yard yesterday. It's funny we had a similar experience this weekend. I guess I'm looking and I just like you can't look close enough because you look close. And this is what microscopes are for, obviously. But you look. And there's just more and more complexity yeah, there is. and granularity the closer that you look. And God yeah. is in all of that. And he these little tiny flowers, I think they're so pretty. And you, you, you look down in and, you know, all of the little intricacies that are there. Fascin- it fascinates me. What must the mind of God be like? You, you know, because I talked about that. Adam wanted something like himself, but he didn't have a clue. Right, right. If you had never seen a woman, never knew anything about a woman, how would you design a mate? You wouldn't be able to. I don't know what you would come up with. But God knew. He knew it. I but thought, God did. I thought that was interesting, the point that you made, that like that was the last creative act of the Lord. Yeah. Was creating woman. Yeah. Yeah, I Just think he did a jam up job. With it. <laughs> that was, you said you. Uh, we had one moment yesterday. It was in the second service, and you said, "Do you know what I'm talking about?" Uh, no, because you, you said because you of course, the, m- towards the end of the message, you started talking about like how the, the you know the ways of the world has distorted uh, yeah, sexuality, yeah, and then yeah. you just said, Mar- "Marital intimacy." And you're like, "God created it's good," and just for the record. I'm for it. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. just like lost it laughing. And I nobody else, nobody else in the room fo- followed me. Well, they're so afraid of what I'm gonna say next. <laughs> they can't take a breath. They they're scared to death that I'm gonna say something that, oh my lord, he has finally lost it. <laughs> they were just wait it was like how they were waiting for you to finally fall on the stairs because you walk back up and down the stairs. Yeah. I think it was like on your two year anniversary, you're like, Y'all have been waiting for that for two years, so finally. <laughs> Finally fell down. One, one illustration that you used that I thought was helpful. Um, only you were t- one? Yeah, well, <laughs> we've only got time for a couple. Okay. We're talking about the infuser and how, like, yeah. you got that in your house, the whole house. But actually, you could also say about pollen. Like, pollen is just oh, absolutely yeah. everywhere. everywhere. You could. That's exactly right. You know, I saw something this year I've never seen in my entire life. We were sitting in the kitchen. I was sitting at the kitchen table. I was working on something. And Debbie looked out when she said, my stars, I've never seen. This is odd, uh, a color, it's odd. And I looked up. It's when we were having all these storms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I looked up, and it was a pollen fog oh, my over goodness. the entire light. I've never seen anything. It literally was like a, a yellow fog that was out there. And, it's, and I'm just thinking, go get the Claritin right now. Yeah, that's, I'm, I'm feeling it today for sure. We, I was getting ready for a party. 
at, at our house. We had the Easter egg hunt at our house, and so I was like getting the hose out, and I was just hosing off the front of the house. You can't really even tell that it's dirty. Yeah. Until you put the water on it, and then you see just all the, it's just disgusting the way that That's it, a good illustration of sin in your life. You well, really yeah. can't tell how dirty you are until you start getting washed. Amen to that. In the blood. Of the Lamb. We'll have to sing that today at the all-staff meeting. That's good. But the reason I come back to that is because you said we're living, we're living in worldliness, secularism, paganism. Like, it's infused all of our culture. And yeah. so it's so hard for us to think rightly about even the most basic things, yeah. like, it like is, marriage. Yeah. That was your jumping off point, and I let, so I, I don't know because all this stuff is so controversial yeah. now. Pastor. Well, there are a couple of good books okay, that are good. out there right now. One is by this guy Carl Truman called "The Rise and Triumph uh, of the Modern Self." A little difficult. It goes back a lot of going back to where did we get to this point? Where where did we get to this point? In American politics, where everything is sexualized, mm. let me let me give you one mm. clue. That's true. His name was Kinsey Freud. Oh, Freud. Okay, sorry, wrong. Freud. Um, anyway, that's yeah, that is an excellent book to read. There's a book just out by my good friend, Dr. Erwin Lutzer, uh, and it's the, the title of it is Babylon. I tell you what, if you'll talk for a minute, I'll look it up. Okay, yeah, go ahead and look it up. It is interesting, and, and for those of you guys who don't know about uh, Freud, you know, he, he was the one that originated this idea of the Oedipus complex, where, like, even when you're, when you're very, very young, like, all of your thoughts are sexual, even towards your parents. It's really, really disgusting stuff, and, and what Pastor's saying is that that's, that's the kind— it started this, um, well, similar to how Darwinism gave everybody a, of a license towards atheism. This was in the mid-19th century— Freud, in the same way, gave everyone a license to just think about how everything in our life is sexualized. You fast forward 100 years, and after the decline of the American, well, the Western family, like Pastor was saying, with no, no fault is divorce and irreconcilable differences, and that sort of thing, then you come to a point, well, marriage is meaningless, and so is gender, but still we're, I don't know, it's, it, now, now we're in just like a, a soup of, of different Wrong yeah. beliefs, it's difficult. Yeah. Here, here are two other books. Okay. These are both by Erwin Lutzer. Excellent. But anything Lutzer writes, you, you ought to buy. I do. Um, one is We Will Not Be Silenced, oh, yeah, that which is really an good. excellent book. Yeah. The other book is The Church in Babylon. Oh, I need um, to read that one. That is an excellent book. Where are we? And I'll give you one more. Okay. Francis Schaeffer oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is an absolute prophet. He was an absolute prophet. Uh, I've got his the five-volume set of all of his works, mm. and in one of them he has uh, a, a, one of them is a little book, and you can buy just the little book called The Death of Reason. Yes. L uh, Schaeffer will do this. He will tell you not only this is where we are in the culture, he will take it back, and he will show you where it started. That's and he will show you how it impacted art, music, literature, all of that. Well, and all these things are interconnected. They are. Yes, they are. And we realize sometimes people get mad, like, well, why is this weird thing happening in art, and why is this weird thing happening in education? Well, that, you know, all of them are, are stemming out of something else that's, that's happened in the yeah. past. Like yeah. it's, a, it's an expression. Yeah. The cultural yeah. group think. Yeah. Schaefer was brilliant. I've read, I, I don't think I've read any of him in particular, but he had this one disciple who was uh, there with him at Labrie named uh, Nancy Piercy. Have you read oh, anything by her? Stars. Yes. She is brilliant. I've read a couple of her books. Yeah. That's so good. Saving yeah. Leonardo is one. Yes. Yeah. And then I would sit, her book on human sexuality is called Love Thy Body. We, yeah. I, I, I looked at that one as well. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, um, he just was a prophet. The, one of his books, you know, when, when people say, what are the five greatest books you've ever read outside of the Bible? You know, probably at the top of my list is how shall we then, how shall we then live or how then shall we live? Yeah. I can never, because Colson wrote one, one title and Schaefer wrote one there, <laughs> and I can never keep them straight. But his book on how then shall we live, I think is what it is, really had a, it was kind of a, 
open your mind. coming of age in my yeah, mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, of uh, for me, it's it's an excellent book. Cool. Not very long. The Death of Reason is not very long. If you go get these these four or five books that we've just talked about, and you've got a vacation or something oh, yeah. coming up, or between, if you would read these five between now and the end of the year, you will have. You will have done something. You'll be equipped. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm glad you, you said that. You will grasp what's going on a whole lot better. Well, even just the recognition. And sometimes, you, you know how sometimes all you need is, <laughs> for the life change to happen is just the introduction or the title. Like, just think about, think about this. Like, the idea of the church in Babylon. Mm-hmm. There are so many people, um, and you can agree or disagree with this, that are, that are just kind of asleep, especially here in the, still the Christian South. And we sure. don't realize the environment that we're living in and how it is yeah. affecting us and how like we need to be equipped to stem the tide. Well, that's what I was saying yesterday. We do not realize how lulled into hmm. cultural thinking we have become in the church. Um, we, you hear it in comments that are, yes. that are made by good people yes. who love the Lord, but who have, they've, they've not taken every thought captive. They've let a lot of stuff run through their mind that they really didn't, don't need to. And, and it happens subtly. That's right. You know, we, we, we spend so much time in front of TV, five hours a day, right. which is an unbelievable amount of time to sit in front of well, a television. Well, screen, screens in screens general. Screens, yeah. 10 hours and 16 minutes a day. In front of a screen? In front of a screen. Yeah. yeah that's probably right. That's probably you, so much you don't realize how much time you spend on this. Yeah. And then on iPad. Um, do you have the screen time thing? Do you, do you have that I turned do. on? I do. I get that. I get an update. Usually it's on Sunday mornings I get an update. Yeah, Your they screen do. time is? Up or down Yeah. from last week. Yeah, I get, I get the same. Which that's kind of a side, side thing because it's like, okay, well, this is either a lot or a little, but it doesn't necessarily tell me whether I was using it for something helpful or something right. that's wasting time. So it's right. kind of difficult to sort out. But your point is well made that it's it's the same thing as with your diet. You know, you are what you eat. That's the exact yeah. same thing with our entertainment, with the things that we take in with our eyes. Is it not? Yeah, I'm a Krispy Kreme. If you are. <laughs> you are you this is the living I'm embodiment a, of a Krispy Kreme. <laughs> no, I wish. No. <laughs> You said that you need that in the infuser. You need the, the Krispy Kreme. If they can make one that smelled like coffee and Krispy Kreme together, you know. Man, I, I have a feeling that they do. Well, now I know what to get you for your birthday yeah, this year. Yeah. I'm going to get you just some Krispy Kreme essential oil. Oil, oil yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for that to come out in essential oils. <laughs> no, it's got to, We'll get you a candle. I'm uh, sure. I'm sure that it's out there. What else are we going to talk about? I well, oh yeah. So you got to now. You got to tell because you said whatever your top five books are outside the Bible. Oh, you got to list. So I, Tozer's got to be in there, right? Well, you know, Tozer has a great book called Rut, Rot, or Revival, which is pretty. You know, Weird. Tozer okay. is I've never so. Heard of that one. Tozer is so convicting. If you just want to just be left in a puddle of conviction, just pick up Tozer and read him. <laughs> I, you know, I think one of the best books I've ever read and one that has had a lot of uh, impact in the way I, I've studied is Roland Banton. Banton? 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 Banton. Banton. That's Here a long I name. Stand. Here oh, I stand okay. on, on, uh, on Luther. Oh, is an yeah. excellent, excellent book. I mean, it's a classic. You can get longer, like Eric Metaxas did the, the big, yeah, he's thick, pretty good um, book on Luther. But Bainton's book, Roland Bainton, I believe it is, B A I N T A N. His book on Luther is excellent. Okay, I'm gonna put that in there. So the you know those two, I just have to stop and think about. Well, while you, I'll, I'll text you about it, and you can give us a full list next week. Yeah. But I feel like I've got enough books now. I'm going to have to request some extra vacation time to make yeah. sure that I get well, through we'll all these. That. All right, last, last thing before I ask you a couple more text questions. Okay. You quoted Shakespeare yesterday, yes. The Merchant of Venice, and yeah. I looked this up to see how accurate uh, you was. were. And okay. you were, I, I think you were right on. Let me find this link right here. When did you memorize? I, are you? Are, do, I, that was years ago. Okay. Did you ever act in a Shakespearean play? No, no, oh, no. I wanted that so bad. Okay. No, no. 
But you I, in high school, I was given the lead role in. Is it our hometown by Will uh, by Thornton? Wild our town. I I got the lead role. A girl that really liked me had the opposite role. Oh boy! I was dating Debbie. <laughs> And that girl and Debbie were a little bit of rival. And Debbie was not happy at all when she found that out. And so I just did not do the play. I oh, you that. just didn't do no, it? No, no. And my English teacher, I loved her, Miss Dot Brown, um, just sweetest lady. She believed in me when I was a wild, uncontrollable, out-of-control high school teenager. And she believed in me. And she gave me that role, and she was really brokenhearted when I did not take it. Wow. That um, was one of those sliding doors moments in your life. You could have been, like, a great actor. I, I, listen, uh, you know, Richard Burton, you know. Or, a or Richard, Israel, Richard Harris. You talked about Harris I yesterday I talked about Camelot. Richard Harris and Vanessa Ray, Redgrave. I need to go watch Camelot. I've you, still never listen, seen it. My bad. need to put the kids to bed, Okay. and you take... Lauren and y'all go sit and watch Camelot. Okay, I need to wa- I need to watch that. What about what about the more modern follow up First Night? Did you ever watch that with I Sean did. Connery? Yeah. Is that any good? Well, it's got Sean Connery in it. So you know, of course, that's excellent. enough said. <laughs> so, <laughs> so even that. <laughs> but no, it's not it's not Camelot. It's it's total. It's different. You know, it's a different. different. Okay, well I'm gonna do I I'm gonna watch one and or both of those coming Camelot. up soon. And all that extra vacation time you said you're gonna give me. Camelot. Is there is there any? Ever there's what I love Lawless Richard Harris. God, he is so good. Here. Harris is so July good. July and August cannot be too hot. Did you ever? You probably didn't see those Harry Potter movies, did you? Because he yeah, played, I did. Oh, he played Dumbledore in the first couple of those, and he was so I was so sad when he died because they replaced yeah. him with a guy that wasn't as good. Yeah, you hate that when that when that kind of happens in a series like that when you got somebody that's really good. And he kinda, was. He was. You know, that was like kind of uh, the guy that took uh, Don Knotts' place on Andy Griffith. They didn't. Did they really have somebody? Yeah. Warren. Warren was his name. It was just. So it was a different character at least. Oh, okay. Different character, but he was the deputy. Nobody could could do that like Don Knotts. No. I I sent you that. So that That was That is a Did you see it? I sent that Joe, to I sent that to Joanna this morning. I showed it to you, Joanna surely, this you, morning. Yeah, like yeah, when the lyrics don't show up or and something. It's, it's and it's uh, Barney and and uh, Gomer just staring now, at the camera. I can tell you the episode. That's the episode <laughs> when they go in the haunted house. You remember Opie loses his ball in the haunted house, and uh, they Andy sends them up there to get it. And they go in there and get it. I cannot oh, it's, believe it's, it's great. that you know all of these episodes. That's yeah. the same look that he has for the entirety of The Ghost and Mr. Chicken is, it, is Don Knotts. Yeah. Him just staring into the, oh, the ghost. God, that movie scared the living daylights out of me. The Ghost and Mr. Kid. Chicken? Yeah. Do you know that Andy Griffith came in and rewrote that whole thing? He himself did? Yes. He rewrote it. This was the first movie. When Barney was leaving the, the Andy Griffith show, it, it, you know, Andy came to him and said, come on and stay. And he said, I can't because I've already signed contracts. I didn't know that you were going to do more than five years. And so he got into the making, uh, or they got into the putting together the ghost and Mr. Chicken, and it was terrible. Oh, so Barney said it was just, he said it was awful. Don Knotts said it was awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, I called Andy. And I said, Andy, would you come and help? And so Andy went over and rewrote that whole thing. So they were truly good friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, that's why if if you remember Matlock, toward the end of Matlock. Yeah, he, he started had, coming in. He yeah. had Don Knotts come back in. And he also had, um, what's her name? Um, that was his girlfriend. I can't think oh. of her name. What was her name in the show? Uh, well, her name in the show was um, Helen Crump. He had her come back. She was a judge uh, okay. on Matlock. I, lo- I, I loved Matlock. I would watch that during middle school. You know, remember, that's kind of an that interesting su- thing. Summer. Andy Griffith did that. John Wayne did that. They, oh, really? would, they would always bring back people who had acted with them. They would bring them back kind of as, come back and we'll do another movie. There was a loyalty there. Yes. That there's, we, you know, loyalty 
You have to go look that up in the dictionary because nobody knows what loyalty is anymore. Um, but uh, those guys were loyal to the people that made them really great. I think that's I think that's good. And, the, and that is discussed in Genesis that's chapter exactly two, Genesis right? Genesis right chapter and the loyalty of, of Adam to, to Eve that yeah. was there. He yeah. knew his wife. Okay, well, actually, we're going to have to wrap this up soon because we're going to have to book it over over to Helena. I got to I got to tell the people though. Did you know this, Pastor? We're doing the live recap next Monday. No, I didn't. We're so going to be in live the cafe next Monday in the cafe, and somebody will bring donuts. That's exactly an unknown person will bring will, donuts, and the, we're just going to wait for the Holy Spirit to move. There we go. This is going to be really what really fun. So you're preaching I've next got a month, a week to live to lap. I'm going to preach. It'll still be in Genesis, and most... Putting the fun back in dysfunction. Yeah, but because when you get into the family of God, which starts with Abram, Abraham, Abraham yes. and you get in Abraham. with all of that man, the family, and you just really look and think, these are the people God called <laughs> and put together this family here, and they're as dysfunctional wow. as can be. It's all over the place. Yeah. So that'll be fun. Though. We'll see that it will be. It will. the The neat thing is, is don't think that you can't be used. We can don't all think be used. that you can't be used. All right. Well, we'll see you on Wednesday night for midweek. See you on Sunday, nine fifteen, ten forty five services. We'll see you on YouTube just in general, and we'll see you live in the cafe. Yeah, in honor of Prince. What? Philip. Prince Philip passed away. Uh, I read a great world. biography on him just a few months ago. God rest his soul. Yeah, the last one to come out. Was it you that yeah. told me that he was like saying, someone said, what, what was it like to, uh, to stand down beca- and, and let, the, let the queen rise up? And he said, well, at my age, I can't even stand up anymore or something <laughs> like that. He, he ran that family behind the scenes. When you did not see them, he was the, he was the driving force, even to her. In fact, I read something this week that said, who in the world could tell the queen to shut up? Well, he did, behind closed doors. Wow. And she was very faithful and loyal to him. They understood loyalty, yeah, the, the royal did. family. She did, at least. Next week in the cafe. Well, that, we'll start with that next week. Okay. All about the... All about the uh, there I'm you go. good. We There's had a... all for Easter. <laughs>